I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my YouTube channel. As musicians, we don't often think of muscles apart from just that of our brain, but actually we use a lot of muscles when we're playing an instrument or if we're singing. Uh, if you think about aspects of posture and core um, and lung muscles that, you know, your diaphragm, there's lots to think of there. However, outside of those aspects, I've never really given much attention to muscles, physical exercise. I think, you know, Naturally, I'm an indoor kid. Uh, of course, I played outside when I was younger, but, um, you know, comparing my childhood to my husband's childhood and, and sort of teenage years were very different. My husband would be out marathon running and uh, rock climbing, whereas I'd be sitting at home reading a book or colouring in. And that's okay, I guess, when you're young. And, um, you know, a lot of my time was spent playing the piano, playing the flute, singing, just as it is now, actually. It's funny that is, isn't it? Um, but I've sort of looked around at um, sort of older relatives and friends and I've made some comparisons and I've seen sort of older people who um, don't stay active or don't get active and the quality of life issues have really concerned me compared to those people. Of course we all have, you know, we can't help getting old, we all have illness uh, and so on, but quality of life issues where, you know, those people who I've seen who are uh, go for walks, do yoga, get out and do the gardening and all those sorts of things have really made a big impact on me. So last year I had kind of um, a bit of a revelation and I just thought I have got to get doing something because I spend so much of my time sitting at the piano, either on the piano stool or on the stool next to it teaching. If I'm not at the piano, I'm uh, standing still playing the flute or standing or sitting singing or I'm at the desk all of that is work and then for relaxation um, I'll sit and read a book or I'll sit and do some sewing and I just thought this is not good you can perhaps get away with it a little bit when you're younger and sometimes as well perhaps in my sort of sort of 30s I was forced to do physical activity because you know I'm lumping around uh, baby seats and children with twins and then another one and so I'd got muscles going because I was kind of carrying kids here there and everywhere and as my life's got a bit easier you know I've not replaced that physical exercise with anything else and I just thought I really need to do something about this and so being an absolute stranger to the gym or physical activity it's not something that ever's appealed to me before I thought I better get myself a personal trainer and so God bless dear Nick who was so patient with me and um, really encouraged me and got me on this journey um, and sort of got me started from below zero. I think sometimes some people have got um, muscle memory from back when they were sort of on the BMX bike or running around as kids and I just don't think I'd even got those muscle memory sort of triggers to get me started and even things like uh, the psychology of it was such a big change to me. You're just stepping into a gym was really really scary it was an alien world and I think you know if you don't if that's kind of your thing you don't understand what a barrier that is to somebody just making that start I know now after a year that perhaps not everybody who's in a gym is an expert and not everybody's doing necessarily good or right things but I didn't know that then and I just felt like there was this big arrow over my head like sort of absolute newbie here you know glaring mistakes and even things like wearing the garb like it putting leggings on and so on there was like this code that I didn't understand and I imagine let's just sort of look on the flip side of the coin if a complete sort of newbie to uh, the music world were to step onto a stage or step into an orchestral situation that would be really scary in a music rehearsal where do I sit where do the flutes sit um, where do I um, stand for second soprano all of these things that are just 
normal to me would be quite um, a barrier to a new person and even the dress code you know they say all black but is it like really posh all black or can I just wear a plain black t-shirt these things sort of like the the nuances of sort of the office politics as it were are quite difficult for um sort of new people into the scene to overcome and so I had to get used to wearing all of the the garb and not feeling like a complete stranger and so it was a massive step taking a step into this new world and Nick bless him has really got me going so that I'd sort of got some physical stamina some core strength and I think people want different things out of the gym and I'm not going there to um sort of lose pounds and pounds by Christmas and to change dress size by this time, you know, and, and I'm certainly not going at it as a slam diet to um, sort of have this crash and then sort of binge back into old habits. I don't think that's healthy. I have seen lots of stories um, on Instagram and on Facebook and so on where people have like made massive changes and uh, I really applaud that however that's not my story I don't want to make massive changes and also I haven't that time and I haven't the brain space to give it that sort of priority yes it's something I need to do but it's not a massive priority because music is my priority and after that you know family I've got a very busy full blossoming family life and if you know my young lad turns well young they're all grown up now but if he turns up and you know I'm, I'm around I want to stop and have a cup of tea with him and um, you know we'll nip off and have a, a coffee and a piece of cake or you know me and my hobby because we both work from home we'll often just say right you know come on let's nip out and we'll go and have a, a cup of tea and a scone at John Lewis or something just to kind of get out and change the geography and just have a bit of time together to chat and I'm not willing to lose those things really however I've minimized them and I'm starting to uh, feel the difference of that and I think as well I'm certainly never going to be one of those who's addicted to exercise and people have said oh do you feel loads better and it's like well I don't know if I do really however I've had to change the way that I go about things because you know life happens and I can't be there at the gym all the time and it's not something that I feel I need to do to keep me sort of mentally happy. Some people get really stressed if they don't go to the gym, that is really not me. Um, but actually, as I've said before, you know, my dad's been very, very poorly and he died not long ago. And so we've spent long periods of time at the hospital. I've managed to keep teaching, but, you know, priorities have not been go to the gym or keep your exercise routine up and so on. And so actually I've really slipped back and that can't be helped. These things happen. And it's only as I've slipped back that I've realised the good that it was doing me and I can really, well I could really tell a difference in my posture as I was sitting at the piano and also uh, you know my lung capacity playing the flute had dropped again, I was getting more headaches because my diet had dropped and it's like do you know this whole gym thing must have been working because I'd really felt the benefits so gradually that I'd not noticed the improvement until they'd gone. And now, of course, after all the busyness of, you know, my dad and the hospitals and funerals and things, I'm really quite behind on my work schedule and practice schedule. In my absolute priority is to spend time at the instrument. And so I can't be going to the gym just now. And so I've had to just take a back seat. And again, Nick's been so supportive of that and so understanding and I'm really grateful. And this is not the end of the journey for me, but I just need a bit of time and a change. And so so I don't want to give up entirely because, you know, as I'm sitting at the piano, before I could feel that my core was stronger and I, and I felt sort of my posture was better so I wasn't getting backache for doing long periods of practice or when I was playing my flute I felt like my lungs were better and, and I don't want to lose that and I don't want to slip back and... Um, and again, those comparisons of quality of life issues are still strong in my mind. So it's about a lifestyle change. And so I've taken on this sort of 
um, mantle of adopting physical exercise, which is something that I wouldn't normally choose to do, but I need to change the way I do that just because I can't be going to the gym just now. Um, I do really miss the spin classes that I used to do. And never ever would I have thought to have heard myself say that sentence, that is an alien sentence to me, but it's true, you know, so it just shows there's always something new around the corner. Um, but I really do miss those spin classes, but I can't just timetable it in at the moment. And so what I'm doing now is I am making sure that I am going for a really, really brisk walk, almost a jog in fact, you know, one day I'd like to go for a run, but I just, um, I'm not at that stage yet. And so um, I can do that, whether it's six o'clock in the morning or nine o'clock at night, whatever time suits me. And actually, I really, really like going for a walk in the rain and the wind and autumn's my favorite time of the year. And I think as well, sort of, um, from a sort of psychological point of view, it's perhaps, um, more beneficial to me at the moment after all the you know hospitals and funerals and all of that sort of sad stuff actually getting out into the fresh air and you know the wind and the rain in my face and blowing the cobwebs away and after that I'm ready to come back in and kind of focus on the piano and I can tell straight away after getting back out there and doing some exercise and getting working, I can tell that my posture's better again and that is better for me when I'm sitting at the piano or playing the flute. And again, when I'm at choir, those long phrases where you're not supposed to take a breath, I'm not cheating so often and taking breaths in weird places in the sentence. And so I just think um, from a, a mental health point of view as well as from a physical health point of view, it's better for me at the moment to get outside and just have a walk while I get everything back on track and catch up with my work and just get myself back on the level after all this sort of last few months of upheaval. And so I just thought I'd share that with you because as, as musicians, we seem to sort of microscope focus in and we think about the music and we're always thinking about, you know, our studies, whether it's the theory studies or our practice time and I've got to get this scale right and I've got to get this fingering right. But actually, you know, we're, we're a whole person and life is full of... Um, compromise and we can't do everything all the time and I do love that um, psychology uh, reference I think it is the gestalt theory goodness that's a blast from the past where it says the whole is more than a sum of the parts and I think we just need to get that whole picture and maybe just to encourage you to think that even though we are musicians uh, and we are studying and we're using our brain don't neglect the rest of your body and I can honestly say that it's really really helped me and I'm so grateful to those who've encouraged me on the on the journey my hobby has been so encouraging and Nick and those at the gym and um, hopefully I'll get back to it soon but in the meantime I'm going to go off for a walk now and just blow those cobwebs away and then I'll be ready to get back and do some work after I've had a little breath of fresh air. So I hope that's encouraged you and uh, thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye.